Hi, and welcome to the late September edition of Questions and Answers. Uh, we did this a um, couple of weeks ago from Washington, D.C. Uh, today I'm here in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida, where we've just addressed the uh, Money Man uh, Conference at the Fontainebleau. Very nice event. And uh, let's get to some questions. So our first question today is from Chandra, uh, writing from New Mexico. And she asks, um, now that the Fed has decided not to raise interest rates in September, um, what should income investors do? Obviously, the Fed uh, has been pretty influential over uh, dividend-paying stocks in particular and responsible, really, for uh, some bad performance over the past uh, uh, several months. But, you know, I'm basically telling investors to do pretty much the same thing we've been doing, and that is look for good stocks and look for them when they trade at, at low prices. Uh, look to add to positions. A lot of people are very concerned about, are we in a bear market? What's the, what's, when does the bull market end? Those types of questions. Really, the question you, you want to ask is, uh, can I buy good stocks at, at good prices? And again, that's what we're focusing on. So thank you for that question. Okay, so our second question is from Jim from California. And Jim, uh, first of all, thanks us for selling CEMIG, the Brazilian utility, uh, earlier this year. But he wants to know, now that it's down about 80% from uh, where we got out of it, is it time to buy it again? Uh, I'm really looking very closely at, at Brazil, Jim, uh, and I think that eventually we are going to have a great buying opportunity there. The country is not going to go up in smoke. They have a lot of things working for them, obviously, a lot of things working against them right now with the drought. Uh, some of the chaos, particularly regarding regulation, um, and that's really hurt companies like Simig, of course, being a utility. They, they've actually looks like they're going to lose um, the ability to run those giant hydro plants, which, you know, as you as you know, um, at one point I had really thought that they would be able to work a deal with the existing government. So, I mean, in view of those types of problems um, that Simig had, which, which are unique to it. Um, I don't advise buying it at this time. In fact, I'm advising people to steer clear of it. What I am looking at, though, is a broader play on the Brazilian market. Um, we also have a couple of stocks that have a large presence in Brazil, Brookfield Renewable Energy Partners, which has avoided all the problems that, uh, that CIMIC has had, um, AES Corporation, Duke Energy. These all have, and Telefonica, they all have uh, exposure to Brazil, uh, but it's not direct exposure. So. At this point, that's how I like to play it. But again, this is this looks like a market where we're going to have uh, possibly a real opportunity, just not in Cynic. Thank you. Okay, so our next question is from Art. Uh, he's writing to us from California, and Art uh, asks, uh, "What about Yilcos? He's read the piece that uh, that we had as Income Insights recently, um, and he wants to know about uh, 8.3 Energy in particular." Um, you know, the yield co space, as you've gathered from reading what I have to say, um, is very differentiated in terms of quality. Uh, investors really aren't uh, doing so in terms of the pricing, but uh, there's a number of uh, yield co's that are on very solid ground, and we've recommended some of those just recently, uh, in fact, NRG Yield. Uh, but there are also some that are on the weak side, and that, I think, applies to 8.3. The thing I don't really like about this one, a couple things. First of all, I think its sponsors, which are SunPower and, and First Solar, basically spun it out at the top, um, and it just looked like from the assets they were throwing in there that they were just they were more interested in getting assets off their books that they didn't want, particularly uh, rooftop solar uh, contracts, and so they spun all that down to 8.3, um, and I think it's it's a, an area of the solar market where there's a lot of risk that people aren't really appreciating right now so this one is down more than all the others um, and uh, but there's a good reason for it so if you're interested in the yield codes go with NRG yield and some of the others that we've talked about uh, Abengoa yield is a pretty big yield too but these are much higher quality situations they're not so exposed to the rooftop market where honestly no one is making money at this point so our next question is from Fred uh, from Georgia and he, Fred is writing about the local utility, Southern Company, and he asks, given the uh, cost overruns at the Kemper power plant in Mississippi, shouldn't we be exiting Southern Company? 
Obviously, um, you know, Southern Company has stubbed its toe uh, with this Kemper power plant. It's an integrated gasification combined cycle plant that strips out carbon dioxide. So it's designed to burn coal very cleanly and then the carbon dioxide will be used to inject into oil wells nearby. Interesting plan, but you know, it was a first moving, first mover project. Um, and in other words, no one else had done this before. So typically when that happens, you are gonna have cost overruns. And in this case, Southern has experienced those. The regulators in Mississippi have been somewhat iffy in terms of uh, recovering those costs, so they've had to eat a bunch of those costs. Uh, but the good news here is that they've pretty much taken the, the write-offs that they're going to have to take from that. Uh, there might be a, a few more um, uh, uh, unexpected costs pop up, but this plant looks like it is going to come online uh, probably early next year. Um, and once it is online, it is going to burn very cheap coal and it's gonna, again, that carbon dioxide will be available for injecting into uh, oil wells. So this is not really a big risk. I mean, if you're looking at Southern, the big risk is, of course, the Vogtel uh, nuclear power plant, and can they keep that project on stream, uh, on, on you know, it's, it's already somewhat above budget, but can they keep it to the new schedule? And again, this is something we have to watch every quarter, uh, changes in guidance. Also, we wanna make sure that the regulators are still supportive. So far, so good, and also I think Southern's merger with um, AGL, the uh, gas utility across town in Atlanta, will be a very big plus for them. It's going to generate a lot of very stable revenue, and it looks like that they will be able to close that. I, I'm very positive on that merger. So all that added up, I don't think it's time to sell your Southern company. I don't think Kemper is that big of a deal for this. And again, this company has a lot of good stuff happening, uh, this merger being one of, the, one of the biggest things. So stick with your Southern company. Okay, so my last question today is from Sandra from Illinois, and Sandra writes that she has done well with our seasonal trade of utilities, which I have put into Conrad's Utility Investor. Uh, basically, we buy utilities, uh, a leveraged uh, exchange-traded fund at the beginning of October, hold it through the fourth quarter, and uh, it's been a pretty successful trade. So Sandra's been able to do well in that. She's wondering if we'll be doing the same thing this year. Will we be entering this trade again? Um, and the, the answer is, uh, I really have not uh, made up my mind on that. Uh, if you look at the history of utilities and how they do in the fourth quarter, um, it's generally speaking, the, if, if the performance has been good up to that point, um, then the fourth quarter tends to be very good. Uh, I'm pretty hopeful for it, but I really want to uh, see where we are with the broad market. One thing we saw at the end of August, which is a little bit alarming, was the utilities selling off with the broad market. We, Kind of caught them they kind of caught themselves in july rallied for about six weeks but then when the broad market headed down they came down with it so those are some considerations uh, that we have we also have a service that I'd, I'd like to just bring to your attention it's called pig versus bear it's a um, trading service so if you like this type of thing um, we do those pretty much full time in that publication and uh, you can uh, you know we'd love to, for you to check it out uh, but as far as the seasonal trade of utilities goes, I think I'm going to do it, but um, we're really going to have to wait till October 1 to see if uh, the stars are aligned, as it were. So thank you for that question. Okay, so thanks everyone for tuning in to this uh, edition of Questions and Answers. Uh, we will be following up on this uh, as uh, uh, pretty much every couple of weeks. So uh, if your questions did not get answered this time around, uh, please uh, write them in and I'll be happy to uh, um, answer them in this format. We also, again, have uh, monthly chats in our Energy and Income Advisor newsletter, uh, so that's another way that we reach out and, and try to figure out what you're saying. But um, in the meantime, please, uh, please write us, uh, call us, let us know what's on your mind. Thanks again.